Your show is about to start now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Director of Marketing Communications, Melissa Henley. Good morning, Empower. Well, normally I say good morning, Empower, because it's 8 a.m., so I guess I should say happy almost lunchtime, Empower. <laughs> So it sounds like you all like the 11 a.m. keynote. No one miss, is missing getting up at 7.30 a.m. to be here at 8? Yes. yes, I hear a lot of yeses out in the audience. Well, welcome to Empower. Welcome to Long Beach. We're so happy you're here. Now, you may have noticed from walking around the convention center the last two days that this year we're talking a lot about the future, more specifically the changing world of work. And this future is fueled by digital transformation. Now, those of you who have joined us in Empower over the fast, past few years see it. Some of you probably remember that giant 200-page catalog of classes you'd haul around in your backpack. Anyone? I hear a few of you. Now, we have the app. I don't think many of us miss the workout of carrying that program around. Maybe some of us miss the stickers that used to be in it. Now, just like we've changed here at Empower, things have changed in your offices, too. Your phone makes it easy to work anywhere, anytime. Digital transformation is making you rethink those paper forms and manual processes. And advances in automation, AI, and robotics have the potential to upend the way work has traditionally gotten done. Our workplaces are changing fast. Sometimes it's changing so fast, it might feel like we can barely keep up. So what can we do? How can we drive the future instead of feeling like we're being driven by it? Think about how you can change your attitude about change. Because in, as more and more of our industries are disrupted by digital transformation, as leaders, we have to keep evolving and stay ahead of the curve. To get ready for what's coming with automation tomorrow, we all have to challenge ourselves to understand the technologies that are on the horizon today. Now, we hope the sessions and keynotes here at Empower give you the understanding to spark those ideas that will transform your organization. But we also hope that you find the solutions to drive change from the other members of the Laserfish community. Find anyone over the next three days and ask, They'll share how they use Laserfish to develop new answers to old problems, how they were inspired to drive change, how they transform their organizations by thinking differently. At this morning's keynote, you'll hear how others are preparing for the future. Industry leaders, innovators, and Laserfish executives will share how embracing digital transformation is helping them change the future of work. But don't keep those insights to yourself. For those of you who are on Twitter, make sure to share using this year's hashtag LFEmpower. And you can also participate in the conversation on the official Empower app, available in the Apple app and Google Play stores. Anyone out there using the app? All right, I know, I've been keeping up with all your conversations. Talk about not being able to keep up with the pace of change. I can't keep up with all the conversations on the app. Now, all of us at Laserfish hope that attending Empower inspires you to reimagine how Laserfish can help you change the future. Now, to kick things off this morning, I'd like to welcome our first speech, uh, speaker. Chris Wacker is a technology entrepreneur and CEO of Laserfish. As CEO, Chris sets Laserfish's strategic vision and drives business growth. Chris is committed to leading a customer-centric organization, ensuring that every single one of you has an exceptional, distinctive experience. His dedication to this customer-focused approach is inspired by the Laserfish community and your passion for efficiency and transformation. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Laserfish CEO, Chris Wacker.
Thinking with them. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Empower 2019. Thank you all for coming to experience the future of work. This is our 18th Empower conference. It's like one big, enormous family reunion that gets larger and larger every year. There are over, almost 4,000 of us here today, a large but still intimate group. This year, we have even more opportunities for you to learn, network with peers, and grow professionally. With over 280 classes on our software, customer stories, and introductions to machine intelligence and robotic process automation, I believe this week will be amazing. Look around the venue this morning. We're a positive and motivated force. Your presence demonstrates your commitment to making your organizations more efficient and productive through technology. And we at Laserfish are committed to you. Our organization is focused on your success. We are a mission-driven company. We're all pioneers in digital transformation. Our original pioneer and founder of Laserfish, Neeling Wacker, would be proud of us today. She launched digital transformation over 30 years ago by creating the paperless office. This was the first step, moving from paper to digital. Because of her vision, Laserfish is today the industry standard in digital document repositories. Since the early days, we have been advocating and advancing the future of work, of work always a little ahead of our times. Several years ago, we launched Laserfish Forms, enabling the next step of digital transformation, business process automation. When forms are combined with Laserfish workflow, they can originate and route documents around an organization in a fully automated process. And when this process is transparent and reportable, we are truly flying by instruments rather than sight. We freed ourselves from the tyranny and monotony of repetition. We are allowing the human mind, the most powerful and advanced cognitive processor on the planet, to do what it does best, creative thought and decision making. So, a number of us here today have experienced Laserfish business process automation. To those of us who haven't, think of it like this. In our homes, we use smart devices. Alexa, ring video doorbells, Next, to name a few. All of these devices innovate and automate different parts of our personal lives. They relieve us from having to perform repetitive and routine tasks and they do so without effort and pretty much perfectly. Now, let's move from the home to the office, the birthplace of monotonous tasks and processes. These routine tasks and processes can now be done with Laserfish business process automation and robotic process automation with payoffs far beyond making life a little easier at home. Let's take a deeper dive into robotic process automation, introduced last year right here at Empower. For example, robotic process automation can copy spreadsheet content into another application, saving labor and eliminating typographical errors. You can think of it as a helpful automated bot programmed to handle those repetitive tasks, essentially creating more time for our organizations. And time is the one commodity none of us can buy. Some of you may be thinking, I can do that already. And in some cases, you're right. Ma manual legacy processes can work just fine. However, in most cases, robotic process automation is a much faster way for, much faster way for us 
to design and build processes for your organization. By combining robotic process automation and business process automation, we can program almost everything from small tasks all the way through to complex, multi-stage processes, putting them on autopilot so they could be performed with minimal human oversight. Again, the goal is to get us to use our minds for the right purposes. Let's talk about how business process automation is used in the real world. Recently, we had a couple of really destructive natural disasters. When hurricanes Florence and Harvey hit the Carolinas and Texas, Laserfish users in those areas had already put process automation in place. Let's take a look. My name is Dava Clark, and I'm a programmer analyst at Cypress Fairbanks ISD. We have 91 campuses, we have over 116,000 students, and we cover 186 square miles in Northwest Houston. We first implemented LaserFish as a document storage system about 13 years ago in our district. Uh, just recently we started using it for more process automation and forms with workflow. And a few months before Hurricane Harvey hit, we implemented a digital onboarding system so all of our new hires come through electronically with LaserFish forms. Hurricane Harvey stalled over Houston for four days, dropping 20 to 60 inches of rain. During that time, our roads were completely inaccessible. Some of our employees lost their homes. Some of our employees' family members lost their homes. There was no way we could get to the office during that time. Our students were out of school for two full weeks, and this is the first time in Cypress Fairbanks history that we had to delay the first day of school. One of the things we didn't want to have our employees worry about was getting their paycheck on time, including our 1,200 new hires that were depending on their first paycheck from Cypress Fairbanks. Our human resources team and payroll team were able to access the necessary documentation from home within LaserFish and route them interdepartmentally to be able to get their paychecks on time, and that would not have been possible without our LaserFish implementation. Automating their processes allowed them to keep their operations running and pay their employees in a time of crisis. So now we have instant access to information. We also have digitized and automated our organizations. So now what? Analytics and machine learning. Now that LaserFish users are beginning to amass huge amounts of data from running digital and automated processes, they're beginning to investigate how analytics and machine learning can help them use that data to even greater advantage. This is an area of intense development for us at LaserFish. But already, we're seeing several of you who have achieved tremendous results. First, I'd like to start in the area of law enforcement. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department has over 20,000 employees serving a population of over 10 million. One of the largest problems facing them is recruiting new sheriff's deputies. So to answer this challenge, they've taken a data-driven approach to hiring, using LaserFish process automation to address staffing needs. With over 15,000 applicants per year, the sheriff's department has reimagined their hiring process to speed their time to hire new deputies. The department can now pre-evaluate applicants through an automated screening process. And these completed applications are analyzed for red flags, anything from minor infractions to serious felonies. By automating this process, the department has reduced the average amount of time to bring on a new recruit by nearly a full year, from 18 months down to six to eight. The system also enables the sheriff's department to prioritize cases and move top-tier candidates forward more quickly. Shortening the time to hire has been a critical improvement for the department in the race for the best talent. In addition, they can collect that, the data they can collect can be used to further refine and improve the process 
both through analytics and in the future through machine learning. This means more qualified officers are ready to protect and serve faster. Halfway around the world, another Laserfish customer is focusing on proving its processes so it has more time to do the work that matters. In Hong Kong, Mitsui Sumitomo Insurance Group, a Run Smarter Award winner this year, has automated its claims processing system. They now have faster response times and more visibility into everything involved with people's insurance claims. Think about that. Filing an insurance claim is never fun. Oftentimes, MSIG is working with customers who are experiencing hardship. The last thing they want to do is fill out more paperwork, experience more uncertainty, and wait longer for relief. By making that process faster, more accurate, more efficient, and more streamlined, MSIG is making their customers' lives that much easier. At the same time, MSIG employees can spend more time understanding their customers' needs. They can focus on serving people, not processing paper. And the company's digital transformation journey isn't over. MSIG continues to improve its ability to analyze data, and the company has plans to automate more systems and implement additional tools like machine learning in the upcoming years. These are just a few of the stories we're hearing as organizations are progressing further in their digital transformations. You can start to appreciate the excitement discovery, and opportunity that resides in our own databases. These are the sorts of opportunities that await us as we advance to the final stage of digital transformation. At the finish of his most recent book, The Fifth Risk, Michael Lewis states that it is what we can't imagine that can kill us. Now, while this is a fairly dark statement, there is a definite truth to it. The point is that most of us can't imagine that which we haven't experienced or can't see. I believe most people think graphically and process information as images, not individual or discrete data points. The sooner we can present information in the form our brains prefer, the faster and more accurately it can be processed. We are fortunate to live in an era in which we have the tools to expand our horizons and augment our critical facilities. Think about everything I've said so far. It can be summarized in three words. Digitize, automate, analyze. Digitize, automate, analyze. By managing organizations and operations through this approach, we can, um, we can see and imagine things that are otherwise impossible. The more data we enter into our systems, the smarter the systems become. And the more information the graphs and the patterns of the data will reveal. And maybe it will help us to, to attack the largest problems we face as a global community. How can data be used to understand the prevalence of homelessness, the rise in opioid addiction, or the, how to mitigate the impacts of climate change? These are large, complex issues. But I am optimistic that we can continue to innovate toward their solutions using all of the data that we can collect. How can we get started? The best way, the exchange of ideas, is the best way to get started. And Empower is the best place to start that exchange. As I mentioned in the beginning, we're a large but intimate group, all dedicated toward a common goal. I encourage us, all of us, to reach out to our fellow attendees 
and start conversations. Like any network, computer or human, the more we communicate and exchange, the smarter we become and stronger we become. We, are all, we all want to make our organizations more agile, smarter, and efficient. But most importantly, we are here to determine how we can use technology, automation, and analytics to better the lives of those we serve every day. So let's get started and create the future of work together. Thank you. Now, I'd like to switch gears and speak with a special guest whose organization is helping create futures for, for kids in need, autistic children. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Will Brandon from Learning Arts. Welcome to Empower K uh, keynote stage, Dr. Brandon. Thank you. And thank you for being here. I'd like to know a little bit more about learning arts and the work you do, which I find amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about learning arts, what you do, and what is the organization's mission? Sure, sure. Uh, learning arts is a uh, California company. We work with kids with developmental disabilities, uh -huh. uh, mostly autism. Uh, but uh, also some neurodevelopmental disabilities, uh, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. um, we've been in business for 21 years now. Um, I would say our mission has a twofold component to it. Uh -huh. uh, the first component would be helping kids with developmental disabilities, helping kids with autism. And the second would be helping those who help kids with autism. So not only a focus on our patients, but also a focus on our employees and making everything mesh together. Mm -hmm. Wow, very good. Thank you. How is laser fix technology used at Learning Arts and in patients' homes? This, I, I cannot say enough good things about laser fish. <laughs> Thank, I you. Always Thank brag. you very much. I brag to everybody about it. Um, one of the things that amazes me with laser fish is our capacity to help more kids. And I want to kind of go into that in a little detail. Mm -hmm. um, our current board uh, guidelines uh, suggest that one supervisor should be able to help about 30 kids. Uh, in various situations. Um, the problem with that, though, is that the incidence of autism, according to pediatrics in a study that just came out in January, is one in 40, which means that, let's say, I think we have 4,000 4, people here Close today. To it. Um, if you are in a row with, say, 20 people, that means every other row, to give you perspective, would have someone who had a diagnosis of autism. The incidence of autism is so prevalent that even though the board guidelines are one supervisor for every 30 kids, the actual need is one supervisor for every 120 kids. And the incidence of autism is growing in the United States faster than people are getting certified. Um, California is uh, unique in that it has about a little less than 20% of all the BCBAs in the United States reside here in California, but we still have a problem with ratios. And where LaserFish comes in is that our program is very data intensive. Uh, we want to look at the kids' progress. We're looking, measuring goals. We're measuring those goals to criterion. Um, we're looking for trend lines. Is the child going to be a best outcome child? Is the child going to go into regular ed versus special ed? All of these parameters are data driven. Um, you could have as many as 10 goals per child, uh, three to six targets per goal. Uh, over the course of a day, you might take anywhere from 150 to 450 data points multiply that by 30 kids, and suddenly your BCBA or your supervisor is just taking a big four-inch D-ring binder full of paper and doing this instead of seeing the kids. But what we've been able to do with LaserFish, if we've taken that four to five hour process per kid, looking through and flipping through those data binders into, in essence, a button press. Now all the data is analyzed for us, and we've been able to increase our ratios to double and, in some cases, quadruple recommended standards with no effect on care or outcome. It's been absolutely incredible. Wow, amazing. Another, inter another interesting point on that, too, is that now that we're not spending all that time 
looking through the binder and helping the kids, we can also look at other parameters of interest that we might, not have, mi we might have missed simply on paper and pencil. Like, for instance, if we're both working on a case, maybe you can get the child to do something that I can't. And so I could see that in the data and say, hey, Chris's data is better than mine. What's Chris doing? And then I can explore that option, whereas before, I might have just glanced over it because the shift said X data. So really, really, uh, really helping us engage the kids. And not only that, be, um, because we work for uh, Medi-Cal, we have a lot of reporting requirements, of course. So mm -hmm. uh, the other nice thing about LaserFish is that it's a uh, integrated system. So um, our HR files and our client files and our clinical files are basically button presses when we're getting asked for information from the state. So how's the child doing? What's your clinician's qualifications? Have they had their background checks, et cetera, et cetera? It's been really, really amazing. Wow. Uh, uh, pinpoint and attention during the early, early years of a child's development is critical. In absolutely, opinion. absolutely. Uh, it, some good parameters of outcome uh, are getting the child early. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that of all the parameters that uh, you could look at, uh, genetic disposition, intelligence, uh, parent participation, uh, family involvement, uh, age is the most uh, prevalent one that predicts outcome. The younger, the better. Wow, incredible. Yeah. Well, tell me, how does Laserfish play a role in achieving your organization's objectives? We have a couple of things that we're doing uh, right now. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of the Medi-Cal is now going to what's called value-added uh, um, systems. So agencies that can show and produce better results are going to be given preferential treatment for caseloads. Mm -hmm. And with LaserFish, we have the advantage already. I mean, because uh, I could get a call from a funder or from an insurance agency, and they could ask me pretty much any parameter of interest that's in our metadata, and it'd be a button press, and I could get it to them instantly. It's ab absolutely fantastic what we're able to do with this. Wow. Um, we have been able to, uh, we've been able to survive uh, transitions from uh, regional center services into the insurance and Medi-Cal domain because we had that metadata readily available. Wow. Yeah. Providing Absolutely. these services is in a uh, um, time, uh, uh, in a timely manner is, is really in, uh, just critical in, the, in, this, in Absolutely. this process. Absolutely. Well, it's yeah. inspiring to hear about data, uh, how learning arts is yeah. data driven. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me, what does the future of work uh, look like for you? We've got, uh, and I'm really excited about this, so I'm going to kind of brag a little, a little <laughs> okay, bit about this. Great. Okay, so um, as many of you might have encountered, uh, one of the issues that is uh, prevalent in those of us who are trying to get people to go from paper to digital is the fact that they don't want to let go of their paper, right? Like, I'm comfortable with my, I love my paper, I want my paper, right? And they don't want to touch the computer, they don't want to touch the tablet, right? Well, there's a system called gamification. And uh -huh. what gamification does is that it takes video game components into your system and then reinforces people for using your system. So now your system comes like playing a video game, and it has all the addictive properties and all the reinforcement qualities that those have. And we recently launched just last week a kudos program where normally we would fill out a kudos, which is like a hurrah or well done, uh, on a piece of paper, and that paper would go into the employee's file, and then, uh, you know, say I gave you a kudos, and then during your review, you'd say, oh, Chris got a kudos from Will, and they would show what you did and everything like that. But now we have the kudos on the portal where people fill out all their data entry, and I really want to make sure that not only do I engage the portal to give you kudos, but then you engage the portal to see you got a kudos, right? So when I send you a kudos, workflow starts. You get an email, hey, Will sent you a kudo. I get an email, hey, Will, you sent Chris a kudo. And then I can look, and not only do you get points for the kudos, but I get points for giving you a kudos. So it's reinforcing to you, it's reinforcing to me to give it to you, and it engages more into the system. The other thing we're doing is uh, patient profiling. And, and this, I'd, I'll go over this real quick. Uh, basically, when we have kids with autism, um, no two kids with autism profile quite the same. It's a spectrum disorder. So you might have one kid who has uh, tantruming behavior and another child that doesn't have any tantruming behavior but is low in social skills. Another one who doesn't have those two but needs cognitive and motor help. Well, because of the wide variety, it's not always possible for a practitioner to get experienced in all the nuances of autism. But now with the metadata, what we're going to be able to do is create a patient profile 
and then match that patient profile to the scope of practice and scope of competence of our staff and start pairing better matches for our clinical staff to work with kids that are better within their expertise. It's really exciting stuff. Wow, I, I, I'm really impressed and, and, and really uh, grateful to you for all your work you do. You, you, you make, you, you're, it's so important in, in so many people's lives who are in need. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, good. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Will. Uh, thank and uh, thank you. Really appreciate your presence today. Uh, I appreciate okay. it. Thanks, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Will Brandon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Executive Vice President Peter Wayman. Good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Chris and, and Dr. Brandon. Let's see. <clears throat> These, uh, I'm going to be uh, introducing two awards. These two very special awards honor two very special visionaries in the Laserfish community. The Tom Wayman Leadership Award honors Laserfish leaders who are innovative and produce effective solutions that can be shared with the broader Laserfish community. Tom was a big proponent of change and improvement, and he was fascinated with the future of work. He would constantly be uh, trying to seek out areas for improvement at our own offices in Laser Beach and research ways to help us do things better, to run smarter. And he loved to support a strong Laserfish community. This year's winner embraces the best of the Laserfish community, innovation, fun, and support for contacts both new and old. Let's learn a little bit more about her. The Tom Wayman Leadership Award is supposed to exemplify someone who um, is enthusiastic about Laserfish, but also shows their leadership, um, as the name states. So Angela is one who I think fully embodies that. She not only builds processes within her department, but she also shares that information with the county in Cowlitz County so they can also use her, her processes that she's already built. She keeps us moving um, so that that person that, you know, keeps the momentum building and keeping everybody moving in the right direction. I think what she's done for at the, the county and for in the area kind of championing that, that using Laserfish is, as a tool for process improvement has, I think it's been a great impact for us and for the citizens of Cowlitz. Angela is such a driving force for the Washington State User Group that it really can't be done without her. She understands her community. She understands what people are, what people need, and how to translate in those into laser fish processes and how to best make it efficient for everybody. Um, the county citizens or her, st her own staff within her department or even throughout the entire county. I was very lucky to meet her a few years ago and I'm very fortunate to work with her on a monthly basis now. If you get a chance to meet her at Empower, you'll be just as lucky. Angela is a Laserfish champion. She's led the drive to expanding Laserfish at Cowlitz County. She mentors her team and helps them become Laserfish advocates as well. She's been instrumental in sustaining a very successful user group in the state of Washington for many years now. She works tirelessly to make sure the needs of the community are met and to nurture an environment where people of all levels are able to contribute to the growth of the group. At Cowlitz County, she's been the driving force behind all their Laserfish initiatives in recent years. She's a knowledgeable user in the community and continues to find innovative uses for the product, most recently to, assi to assist with their permit management project. Angela exemplifies creativity, ingenuity, and the spirit of innovation in her work at Cowlitz County and beyond. This makes her a true leader, and we're thrilled to honor her success and her contributions to the Laserfish community. Please join me in congratulating the winner of the Tom Wayman Leadership Award, 
Building and Planning Department Head Secretary at Callitz County, Washington, Angela Jordan. Thank you, everybody. I'm so happy to be here and honored to get this award. <clears throat> I see many of your faces saying, it's the crazy and power app lady. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> After being on the app since its inception, I feel like I've met so many of you guys and recognize you, you recognize me, and we've got to know each other over the app. Congratulations, you found me in our game of Where's Waldo? My journey with Laserfish began when I moved to my current department in the county office as I worked for roughly about four years ago. My previous department had little to do with Laserfish other than just using it as a repository. My new department, I saw people scanning in documents and wondered what else could this program actually do for us. I talked to our local Laserfish administrator from the county on ways I can learn more. She told me we had a local user group just down the freeway from us that met a few times down the year, or during the year. My boss was supportive and also wanted to know more about what it could do for us, so she let me venture out and see what I could do. My first user group happened to be the day all about forms. And you could only see the words above my head. It was, close your mouth, you're drooling. And it can do what? So I brought these ideas back and talked to my staff and also shared them with our laser fish administrator. They were well received, but our county had no intentions of buying forms anytime soon, so it was more like a pipe dream. <clears throat> my boss sent me to my first Empower in 2016. She realized the potential for what Laserfish could do for us and wanted to know more. I continued to go to user groups locally and bring back information from what Laserfish and forms could do for us. I talked with staff, department heads, and local ele elected officials on ways that Laserfish could do um, and help them make their jobs easier. People began to see what forms could do for them and how it could enhance their departments. I was also able to attend Empower's 2017 and 2018, armed and ready to bring back what I had learned. Our department did, or our county, bought Laserfish forms about a year after introducing it to them. And although our county was in the beginning stages of using forms, we were able to network and find out how others used Laserfish here, which was completely invaluable to us. While waiting for one of my Empower classes one year, I happened to meet one of the presenters sitting out there in the lobby and he built an entire permitting system out of Laserfish. With the help of his information and our VAR, who is currently building the system with us, our office will have an entire building and permitting system made and run out of Laserfish later this year. <laughs> My staff. <laughs> our local Laserfish administrator started a forms development group so people in our um, county offices could learn how to use it. We also get together as a group to bounce ideas off each other, and now it's um, pretty much every department in the county works together and build more forms. I am now the leader of the very user group where I started my journey as. I'm not an IT professional. I am not a laser fish administrator. I just started by asking questions. Anyone at any level of experience with laser fish can benefit from getting involved. I'm constantly learning new things and meeting new people, especially here. And um, just look on the Laserfish website, look at for uh, webinars, local user groups, online courses, and then um, especially talk to your local Laserfish administrator. Um, they are invaluable resources to you. So I encourage you to always ask questions, and um, thank you for this award. <laughs> Congratulations, Angela. We're all proud of your excellent work. Our next award is our most prestigious award, the Neeling Wacker Visionary Award. In honor of our founder, Neeling Wacker, this, award this year this war award recognizes an individual with an extraordinary ability to propel change, a relentless drive for process optimization, and the commitment to using technology to enable enterprise transformation. Let's uh, take a look and learn a little bit more about him. When the award was first announced, um, asking for uh, Laserfish uh, teammates to nominate customers uh, for awards, uh, David immediately came to mind. And uh, I thought about uh, 
how much effort he had put in uh, making it look easy, uh, how much effort he put in uh, to fulfilling the vision that he had for MSIG there in New Jersey. Uh, from the people he selected to work on his team, to choosing the right solution, to, to pushing through the challenges that always come with an enterprise deployment. Uh, remaining calm, focused, making sure our teams communicated well. Um, it made me think of our founder, and uh, who is the founder of this industry as far as I'm concerned. The persistence that David showed, the vision that he showed, it just reminded me of Naylene, uh, who came to this country with nothing, uh, using the sweat of her brow and her intellect uh, to move throughout a world that today we take for granted, but in the 1970s did not exist. And so I, I didn't make the nomination lightly. It only took a, a moment for me to think, who reminded me most of Nailing and uh, when it comes to vision and persistence, and that was David. Laserfish founder Nailing Wacker was a pioneer and an inventor who could identify what people needed often before they could even see it themselves. In an IBM dominant insurance industry, David has had the foresight to select Laserfish for its robust security and workflow features. He was instrumental in marketing Laserfish across the US operations and strategically positioning Laserfish as the company's core workflow system. MSIG is one of the world's largest insurance and financial ser services entities with over 46 uh, operations worldwide and over 16 regional operations in the US. Um, let's click one more. <laughs> Today, uh, Laserfish is the company's central system for insurance policy underwriting and claims processing, simplifying data capture and ensuring data accuracy and security. In recent months, Laserfish has also been expanded to the company's HR and internal financial services operations where David's team leverages Laserfish to automate mission-critical operations, such as employee onboarding and accounts payable. Please join me in congratulating the winner of this year's Neeling Wacker Visionary Award, the Senior Vice President, CIO, and CISO of Mitsui Sumitomo Insurance Group, USA, David J. Sison. Unfortunately, uh, David could not be here because he has a system launch he's leading. But he was kind enough to record a short video acceptance speech for us. Hello, Laserfish fans. My name is David Sison, and I'm the CIO for Mitsui Sumitomo. We are the U.S. operation for MNSNAD Holdings Group, the 30th largest property and casualty insurer in the world. Uh, it's an honor to be chosen for the prestigious Nian Ling Wacker Visionary Award, and I accept it gratefully for our company, our inventive CTO, and myself. We've been using Laserfish since 2014, and we've become some of their biggest fans fans of the people, fans of the products. It's truly the software that our people love to use. Laserfish products have transformed our company in ways that we didn't imagine when we first purchased it. Like many of you, we had visions of becoming paperless or paper light. We had vast file rooms and 30 year inefficient paper intensive processes that were an FBI agent's nightmare with all the fingerprints on everything. Today, those file rooms are productive offices and an innovation lab. We now have all electronic claim files, underwriting files, and many newly automated business processes. Our teams love the results. The pace of change here is transformative. 
finding new and innovative ways to use laser fish in our business helps us to get better and get smarter every year. We couldn't have achieved all this success with Laserfish without the wonderfully helpful people that stand behind Laserfish products and solutions. We've forged a really strong partnership with this team right from the very start. Uh, it's a great comfort to know that I can call Thomas, Jeffrey Green, Linda Ding, or Tom Lapis at any time with any problem, and they will treat our problem like it's their problem. Uh, thank you, Laserfish, for this award. And thank you, Nian Ling, for your vision of how a great company should operate. All the best. Thank, thank you, David, and congratulations to you. And uh, now I will hand it back to the uh, always informed and ever snazzy Melissa Henley. me all the time. I like that. That was nice. So it's been a informative hour. We've heard a lot about the future. We just saw how Angela and David are changing the future of their organizations. But what about us? Can we change the future? We can. It doesn't matter what our title is. What's what Angela said? She wasn't an administrator, she wasn't an IT person, she just asked questions. It doesn't matter how much experience we have. What matters is our desire to reimagine our work, our dreams to reinvigorate our colleagues, our aspirations to reinvent the way things have always been done. Changing tomorrow depends on what we do right here today. It starts here at Empower, with the things you learn, the connections you make, and the actions you take. I challenge you to take the time, while you're here at Empower, to think through where you want your organization to be. Not just tomorrow, but in three years, five years, 10 years. What's that vision? What's that goal you have? And then make a plan for how you're going to get there. To get started, take advantage of the resources that are right here all around you. Take advantage of the people that are all around you. Because the true value of Empower, it's not just the classes you attend. It's the connections you make. And they don't just last while you're here in Long Beach. They last for a lifetime. But most important, be bold. Imagine your future. Dream what's possible, and then use your time here to learn how Laserfish can help you achieve it. Because right here, right now, there's no better time or place to tap into the wealth of knowledge this community holds. On behalf of all of us at Laserfish, we hope you enjoy Empower. <laughs>